I'm Kay Stice. I've been a business school professor for 35 years and have taught at business schools all around the world. You can learn more about me and about my brother, Jim, at our website, sticelearning.com. If you learned something interesting in this current event video, please remember to like it and subscribe to our channel. On Monday, April 19th, 2021, the Wall Street Journal published an article explaining that SOFR was being advocated as a replacement for LIBOR. <laughs> SOFR, LIBOR, what are these things? Well, let's start with LIBOR and why it's being replaced. LIBOR is an acronym for London Interbank Offered Rate. LIBOR is the average rate at which major banks can borrow from one another to fulfill short-term cash needs. Now, because these are loans between major banks, the risk associated with the loans is very low. For this reason, LIBOR has long served as a benchmark interest rate. In other words, loan contracts are written such that the interest rate on the loan is defined as LIBOR plus X percent. Now, the X is higher for more risky loans. For example, I just went online to investigate adjustable rate mortgages or ARMS. The interest rate stated on the loan I found was LIBOR plus 2.25%. Now, this is a relatively low spread or margin because a mortgage loan has relatively low risk. If you don't make the loan payments, the lender can just take the house. Now, I did the same thing for private student loans, which do not have the same quality collateral as do mortgage loans. I found that a student loan applicant with a very good credit score can get a rate of LIBOR plus 2%. An applicant with a low credit score might have to pay a rate closer to LIBOR plus 10%. Major corporations also have interest rates on some of their loans tied to LIBOR. For example, in the notes to its 2020 financial statements, Disney reported that the interest rate on some of its loans are indexed to LIBOR. By the way, Disney also reports the interest rate on some loans to finance the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort as being HIBOR plus 2%. HIBOR? You guessed it, Hong Kong Interbank Offered Rate. Okay, so LIBOR is being phased out as a worldwide benchmark interest rate. Why? Well, in 2012, it was publicly revealed that banks polled to provide the data used to compute LIBOR had been manipulating their reported numbers. By manipulating the number that the world uses for LIBOR, you can manipulate interest rates on literally trillions of dollars of loans around the world. Now, that's not good. So in the wake of the LIBOR scandal, financial institutions from around the world have talked about phasing out the use of LIBOR. In 2014, the U.S. Federal Reserve formed a committee to study how to phase out LIBOR and to determine what to use in its place. The Federal Reserve's candidate is an interest rate called SOFR, Secured Overnight Financing Rate. The advantage of SOFR is that it is based on actual transaction data, not submitted estimates, as was LIBOR. SOFR comes from the rates on banks' overnight lending and borrowing of U.S. Treasury securities. But SOFR is not the only candidate to replace LIBOR. Here are some other proposed benchmark interest rates. In the U.K., the benchmark rate backed by the British Bankers Association is SONIA, Sterling Overnight Index Average. The benchmark rate backed by the European Central Bank is EONIA, Euro Overnight Index Average. Back in the United States, Ameribor is a benchmark rate created from the borrowing cost of thousands of small, medium, and regional banks. So you see that there are lots of candidates to replace LIBOR. In the United States, the Federal Reserve initially set a deadline of December 31st, 2021 for banks to stop using LIBOR as an interest rate benchmark. That deadline has been pushed back to June 30th, 2023. In any event, it won't be long until LIBOR reference loans will be a thing of the past. I hope you enjoyed this current event. Please remember to like this video share it with a friend who needs to understand what you and I now know, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.